Hey, how's it going everyone? This is I Am Error, and I'm back with another tutorial. And in this video, I want to go over a popular feature found in a lot of platformers, which will allow multiple platforms to follow the same path and move about that path synchronously. We'll also set up a path editing tool that'll make the paths show up within the scene window and give us much easier control when we're designing paths. There's a lot to cover in this solution, and I highly recommend you check out my GitHub page and download the new scripts from there first, and then come back to watch this video so you have a better understanding of how this works. If you need some time to download the scripts, go ahead and pause the video here. Otherwise, without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. Right now, the scene that's set up is pretty basic. It contains the main camera with the camera follow script. It contains a platform for the player to stand on. It contains a 2D character that I put together through other tutorials. And if you need help building up a 2D character like I have in this scene, check in the description for our playlist that contains all the videos in which we build the core mechanics of this character. And you can easily follow all these videos if you want to use your own art for your character. What we're going to be discussing in this video is the multiple moving platform manager game object that I have here. First, I'm going to go over the path editor script, which sets up all the visual tools that will allow us to see the paths that we create within the scene window. Then we'll discuss the multiple platform manager script, which handles creating the paths and all the logic to allow the platforms to move between the different paths. Then I'll discuss the movable platform script, which is going to contain a couple public values that'll be fed to the multiple platform manager script. Then I'll discuss how we can set everything up through the inspector and scene windows, as well as how we can make a platform prefab. And these platforms will be instantiated by the multiple platform manager script and either default positions where all the points are or custom positions that we can set up on the path or outside the path as well. And then last, I'll show you how we can make sure if the player is standing on top of a moving platform, that the player is aware of the moving platform and can move with it. Let's get started by going over the path editor script. The first thing I want to note is this does contain a new using statement. As you can see, we're using the Unity editor tools, which will give us different visual tools that we can use within the Unity scene window. For the path editor script to work, we need to let it know what game objects it needs to look out for so that it can apply the visual tools when needed. So we also add this line at the very top of the script. So this line within square brackets here tells the path editor script to give these visual tools to any game object that has the multiple platform manager script on it. Moving right along the path editor script is going to inherit from editor. And without the using statement that I went over earlier, you won't be able to access the editor class. Next, we'll be running the onscene GUI method. And the first thing this method is going to do is set up a local int variable named next. This next variable will go ahead and manage the iteration value because this script is going to set up a dotted line between the different paths. And the dotted line needs to know which paths it needs to draw a line from. And of course, the most logical way to iterate through a list is to add one to the value. But we want to make sure that when the value exceeds the amount of objects within a list, that it goes back to the beginning of that list as the next one. Next, we set up a color through the Handles class, and the Handles class will contain all the visual tools that we'll see within the scene window. And this first handle that we're setting up is going to be a representation of all the different paths that we're going to create. And I chose the color of green. It's an arbitrary color. You can choose any color that you want. But as I discuss the script more, what the Handles class does will make a lot more sense. Next, we create a variable named Path. And this path variable is going to act as a container for each iteration within the list. And how this path variable is going to work is first we run a for loop. And this for loop is going to check for the number of iterations within the number of paths list. And the number of paths value is going to be set up on the multiple platform manager script as a vector2 list. And each of these vector2 values within this list will be the different points on our path in which the moving platform would change direction. We then set a local vector2 position variable to whatever the current value of path is within the iteration. Once we have a position of the current iteration, we need to find the position of the next iteration that the dotted line should draw towards. So the next few lines here handle setting the next value, which is basically setting the iteration value to plus one. Or if that next value has reached the end of the list, then we set the next value back to zero. We then use the world coordinate set up in the position variable to draw a circle at that point which we can then interact with to freely move that position around within the scene window and change the inspector value for that path through the scene. So what this handles.freeMove handled method does is it sets up the position, rotation, size, snap settings, and shape of the handle. And if you wanted the shape of this handle to be something other than a circle, there's a ton of different shapes that you can choose from. The next line of code will go ahead and handle drawing the dotted line between the current path and the next one. And this five value at the very end of this line here is going to be how long each dotted line is. The next line of code is going to make sure each handle has its own unique name. And we do this, of course, so that we can easily distinguish between the different handles within the scene window. Then we have this if statement. And what this if statement does 
is make sure that any changes we make to this handle within the scene window are reflected within the inspector window for this path iteration value. The rest of this logic within this script does the exact same thing as what we just discussed, but will handle visually representing the different platform spawn positions if you want your platforms to be instantiated in a custom position outside of a path point. So let's go ahead and take a look at the multiple platform manager script now. First, I have the serialized field protected game object variable platform to spawn. You can also make this variable public or a serialized field private variable if you want. But regardless of the protection level you give it, we will be setting up this platform to spawn game object variable within the inspector window. Next, we have a serialized field protected enum direction. And this enum will manage the flow of logic to make sure that the platforms move in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. We then set up a serialized field protected direction variable so that we can set up within the inspector window what direction the platform should move in. The next serialized field protected bool variable will have the different platforms spawn at each individual path point, and this bool variable will go ahead and override any platform spawns location you have set up within the inspector window. Next, we have a serialized field protected float variable named speed, and this value will be how fast the platforms can move. Next, we have three public lists. The first list will contain all the different path points, the second list will contain all the different platform spawn points, and the third list will contain an int value, which will manage what iteration value within the number of paths list that the spawned platforms should move towards. How this int value will be used will make a lot more sense once we get this set up, so let's keep moving right along. The next protected list of game objects is going to be a quick reference list of all the different instantiated platforms. Let's scroll down and take a look at the start method now. The first thing the start method will do is check to see if the spawn platforms at path bool is set to true. And if it is set to true, we then go ahead and instantiate a platform at the world coordinates for that number of paths iteration value. We then ensure that the Z value for that platform is set to zero. We also set up the index value found on the movable platform script for that platform. And then next we run a method called check position, which requires a parameter of a game object. So we feed it the current platform that we're working on. The check position method will go ahead and set up the next iteration value in the number of paths list for the platform to move to. Now, if we don't want the platforms to spawn at each path point, this else statement will make sure that each platform will spawn at its correct corresponding iteration point, as well as make sure we can set up the correct iteration value within the number of paths list. To set up the correct value for the next iteration, we have to consider whether or not the platform is moving in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Underneath the start method, we have a late update method, and this method will handle moving each platform within the platforms list by running the move platform method. And just like the check position method, we go ahead and feed it a game object parameter of the current platform we're working with. We then assign a new vector three position. And this new vector three position is where this platform is going to move towards. And it knows what number of paths iteration value it should move towards based on the index value found in the movable platform script found on that platform. We then move the platform to that position based on its speed value. Once the platform's position equals the position value, we then run the check position method to see what iteration value in the number of paths list the platform should go to. And based on what direction we have set in the inspector window, we set the correct index value. The last thing I want to show you is the movable platform script. It's a very basic small script. I went ahead and made sure that adding this script to a game object. We'll also go ahead and make sure that game object contains a box collider 2D component if it doesn't already have one. And this line of code isn't necessary for this logic to work. It's more or less a convenience feature, and it just ensures that any game object I plan on using as a platform has the correct components attached to it already. The only other data that this script is going to contain is a hide and inspector public int index. And again, we use this index value to make sure that each moving platform knows where it needs to move next. Next, I'm going to show you how to create a raycast from your player downwards to make sure that when your player is standing on one of these moving platforms, the player will move with the platform as it's moving around. And to do this, we need to make sure that the player is a child game object of the platform when they're standing on top of it, and not a child game object of that platform when the player is not standing on it. Now, I'm going to write this new logic within my horizontal movement script. You should have some sort of horizontal movement script that you have on your player. So let's go ahead and open up whatever script you're currently using to handle horizontal movement. And if you don't already have a late update method within your horizontal movement script, let's go ahead and add a private void late update method. And within the late update method, let's run a method called check for platform. And I went ahead and defined my check for platform method right beneath the late update method. And what this check for platform method is doing is it's creating a local raycast variable named ray. And we're shooting this ray downwards in a capsule cast method. And I'm choosing a capsule cast method because the collider on my player is a capsule collider. So make sure you cast this ray whatever shape your collider's in. We originate the ray at the bottom middle of the collider. And that's what this coal variable is. We then set up the size of the ray based on the width of the collider. 
and 0.5F. And because I'm using a capsule collider, I have to set a direction of the collider. And this is unique only to capsule colliders. So if you're using something like a box collider, then go ahead and remove this capsule direction 2D dot vertical out of your solution. We then set an angle for the ray, which we set as zero. We set a direction for the ray to go towards, which we set as down. And then last, we give it a distance of 0.25F, so we don't shoot this ray too far beneath the player. If the ray hits a game object and that game object contains the movable platform script, then we go ahead and set the parent game object for the player as that platform. But if the ray doesn't meet any of the criteria above, then the player parent game object is set to null. That's it for all the new logic for this solution. Let me show you how to create a platform prefab, as well as set up everything in the inspector window for the multiple platform manager component. So let's go back into Unity, and let's create an empty game object within the hierarchy window. Let's name this empty game object Moving Platform Prefab. And the first thing I'm going to do is attach a sprite renderer component to it, so that when a Collider 2D component gets attached to this game object, it can automatically create the collider size based on the sprite size. I'm using a simple square sprite as a platform, and then all I have to do from here is attach the movable platform component to this game object. When I add the movable platform component, it automatically adds the box collider 2D component to it as well. If you have different layers set up for platforms, go ahead and choose whatever layer the platform should be. I have my platform layer set up as platform, so at the layers drop down at the top of the inspector window, I'll choose platform. And that's everything I need for this game object. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a prefab by dragging it into the correct folder found in my project window. And then I'll delete it in the hierarchy window to remove it from the scene. Next, let's create another empty game object within the hierarchy window. Let's name this game object Multiple Moving Platform Manager. And then let's give this game object the Multiple Platform Manager component. The first thing we want to do is drag the Moving Platform prefab we made just earlier into the Platform to Spawn slot. For now, let's leave the Spawn Platforms at Path Bool set to False. But we do need to set up a value for speed. So I'm going to test out with the value of 1.25. Let's next put in a value for Number of Paths. I'm going to set the value 8 because I want to make an octagon, and then once I put a value for size for number of paths, a green circle will appear at the middle of the scene window, and this green circle is going to be one of the handles that we set up within the path editor script. All 8 paths are within the same spot right now, and as we move each different handle you'll notice the values in the inspector window for those paths change, and we can either freely move these paths around as we want, or set up the values manually through the inspector window. From here you can move each path point to whatever position you want, and the dotted line will help you see what shape you're making as you move these paths around. If you want some time to make an exact shape, go ahead and pause the video here. I'm going to take a quick break here to make a perfect octagon. As you can see, I have each of the 8 different points in the appropriate position to make an octagon. Next, let's go ahead and expand the platforms to spawn, and I'm going to set a value of 4 for the size, and instead of seeing a green circle in the center of the scene window, I see a red square because that's how I set up this handles. And I want to move each of these four different platform to spawn positions in between different points on the number of paths list. So again, I'm going to take a quick break to set everything up. Go ahead and pause the video here if you want to take some extra time to set up your scene as well. And as you can see, I have each of the different red squares directly in between different path points. And because I have custom positions for the different platforms, what I need to do next is set up this platform spawn next index list. And the size value should be the same value as platform spawn size. So I'm going to put a value of 4 here, and the way I have the code written out for this solution is by default everything moves in a clockwise direction, so I want to make sure that each platform has the next path iteration value as its element value. So for example, at the top here we have this platform 0, and if platform 0 is going to be moving in a clockwise direction, then path 1 would be the most appropriate position for the platform to move towards. So on the platform spawn next index for element 0, I'm going to put the number 1. And then let's go clockwise towards platform 1. The most appropriate path position for platform 1 to move to next would be path 3. So on the platform spawn next index for element 1, I put 3. Moving right along, we have platform 2 here in between path 4 and 5. And if platform 2 were to be moving in a clockwise direction, then path 5 would be the most appropriate position for platform 2 to move towards. So for the platform spawn next index for element 2, I put 5, and then so on down the list. And we need to set it up this way regardless if you want it to move in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction next, because the logic for the multiple platform manager script assigns the index value differently depending on whether or not you're moving clockwise or counterclockwise, and will still assign the correct value for counterclockwise movement based on how we set up the index value within the multiple platform manager script. 
so I don't need to change the platform spawn next index at all if I want this to move in a counterclockwise direction. Because again, the way we set up the next index within the multiple platform manager script considers what direction the platform's moving and sets up the next position based on the movement direction. So with everything set up, let's go ahead and hit play and test it out. And as you can see, when I hit play, the platforms all instantiate at their correct positions. All the platforms are moving to the appropriate next path. And if I change the direction while it's playing, once it reaches the current path position, it goes ahead and changes direction. Let's go ahead and exit play real quick. Let's check this box for spawn platforms at path. And then if I hit play again, all the different platforms will go ahead and instantiate at the different path positions. And it'll go ahead and override any different platform spawns that you currently have set up. All right, that'll go ahead and wrap up this video. If I was able to teach you something or you found the information in this video useful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel if you're not already subscribed. I specialize in top tier solutions for Unity 2D platformers. I also have a course on Udemy that goes over everything you would need to know to make a Metroidvania style game. So if you're using the information in this video to make a Metroidvania, consider taking a look at my course and visit my website for a special discount to the course. There's a link to my website in the description. Regardless though, I definitely appreciate you watching the video. Any feedback you want to leave in the comments is much appreciated. If you also have any ideas on topics that you want me to discuss, feel free to leave those in the comments as well. Thanks again for watching my video. Take care and stay safe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.